Good evening, everyone, and welcome to BT's Fly Tying Friday. Tonight, the 27th of October, 2023, we're going to have the awesome Sherry Steele from Sisters, Oregon, doing Birds of a Feather. And I almost hate to even tell you about the weekly tip, so I won't. We're just going to have to wait and see. And if you're a person who gets grossed out easy, you might as well sign off early. But again, greetings to all of you. Uh, Gretchen's not with me tonight. She's taking life easy. And I'm Al Beattie from Boise, Idaho. And we're very pleased to, to have her joining us. And Sherry Steele from Sisters, Oregon, is a fly tire, fly tying instructor, has been fly fishing and tying for 20 years. She has been a president of the Oregon Council of Fly Fishers International for 15 years, and in her spare time has been the chairperson for the Northwest Fly Fishing and Fly Tying Expo in Albany, Oregon, for seven of those years. The 2024 Expo is scheduled for March of 24. Sherry started the Central Oregon Fly Tires Guild, an FFI charter club in 2009. The club ties all types of freshwater flies with a focus on 20 free Zoom fly tying classes every Thursday evening, starting on November 2nd. The club donates fly, frame fly plates to conservation-minded nonprofit organizations for fundraisers. Join us in welcoming Sherry Steele to Fly Tying Friday. Sherry, it's yours. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, 38 people. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's, uh, that's kind of impressive. So thank you for your time. Uh, I've got a, an interesting class tonight and a demonstration. And I've never done this one before. This is brand new to me. But I figured that a lot of people don't really or haven't really seen the entire bird that they've been tying with you see these little packages and you buy them in the stores and stuff and once in a while you get a bigger package of stuff but uh i thought i'd share the uh full skins that i have that i tie uh, soft tackles with so that's what my program is all about today so uh al if you want to bring up that uh that chart i sent so i'm gonna um everybody can see this screen. I'm going to give John Kreft credit for this idea. <laughs> I was having a lot of trouble deciding which bug, which is the name of the fly here, and what sizes that they hang out in, and then what thread they use, and which body, and which underwing. And uh, the, um, the, the whole program and the way which one goes with what and in it uh all of these like when i'm going to tie i mean well the first one is uh this body that we we always tie these blue wing olives right and all the the different underwing and the hackle wing but then i decided to add a different uh, a different uh uh, uh let me get my note here. It's my different hackle. And it's I, it, this one that I'm going to use tonight is called a hackle wing option. And in the middle of this chart, there's another row that would be right here. And this is a sharp tail grouse. So I'm going to stop this share. So this right here is available to you. If you want me to send this to you, I will. So this is what this, the grouse looks like. Now, if you look at this guy, he looks like a bug in all by himself. And these are the different materials that I use to, uh, to, make, that, to make this particular fly. So I'm gonna show you, I'm just using this brown thread and it can be any, any ADOT. And the TMC 100, I'm using a size 12 tonight for all the sizes because it's easier for you guys to see. Of course, it's easier for me to tie too. But, uh, and then I have a different hackle, each one of these feathers. And the other one is the um, Z yarn. 
So the Z yarn is the underwing. So if you look at all these different, these different sizes here, up around the neck, all the way down through the body, you can use this bird on all kinds of different flies of different sizes. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out and start. So that there's no secret to this technique. So this is just a, a standard um, thread, number eight. And I just don't make a really big deal out of the out of the thread base. I use that most of the time. I have one. And then according to the chart, you can for the body, you can be grayish olive or olive brown. So I've got this olive olive color that's uh, it's just a um, it's a little uh, uh, it's a basically a a uh, place where you can just put a whole bunch of different kinds of dubbing in one place. I should be a quick view of what that is. So there's all kinds of different colors on it, or you can buy it by the pack or package. And I use this extra fine, just a regular dubbing. Start at the back. And there's no tail on these flies. I have some samples of these flies with the tail. And they, I think they would fish anyway. We'll test them this summer. So that's just your regular skinny body. So I just hang on to my dubbing because I put a twist in, the, in this to build it up just a little bit in the front. And then if I have extra, I just drop my thread down over top of that. And I've got leftovers and just cl clip that off. Then the underwing can be gray or brown. So when I put these underwings on, I'm, uh, I'm conservative with the, the the underwing material, but I really don't need to be. It's just weird. So I hang on to it with this, with my right hand. I'm left-handed. And then put one loop around it. I see if that's the right length. Tie down on it. And just clip this off. That's the front end of it. And I get, I have a feather from that guy and I put these on a little sticky so I can grab them without too much prep time. And what I do is I just, I just put the feather already ready to go on the top of it like that. Well, it's pretty interesting because like if you're preparing for a demo and you don't want to take the time or they other people's time to wait for you to do this feather prep you put it on a sticky and it comes right back off so I this is it. the feather and i just pull that that part apart like this make the tie in point and then clip this off so the tie in point is where your thread wrap is going to, your first wrap is going to be. And you tie down on it. Now you can pull it and see how it's uh, in front of the hook eye. So the hook eye is not going to be covered when you finish it. So you just pull on it just a little bit and then tie down on it. Now your feather is, is already locked in. Then I've got my Radio Shack Wonder Clip. And then I use water. And then pick, take my hand and I pinch this guy. So all instead of making a, another procedure for pulling that wind back, wing back, 
I just take a little water and I comb it like combing my hair and then I push really hard because this is a soft fe feather it'll just go already go, already go back so I go down like this and every time I come back around I just pull those fibers out pinch it and pull down and then back up pinch it and pull down. So the modeling look on this feather pops out. And that's why it, it to me, it looks like a bug. And this is a, a soft tackle that you can fish dry with but just putting some floating on it. And my husband and I use frog fanny. <clears throat> and then this, the same method that Al's been teaching forever. Well, I don't know forever, but I learned it last year. Pull the stem back. Now it's pretty locked in. And then you cut it. It's good. And hopefully it doesn't unravel on your demo. <laughs> so this is all looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and wind back. All the way to where I can grab a few of the fibers. I think I got a couple that are there that shouldn't be. There we go right up against the base there. And you're ready for the tie off. And if you fish this as uh, spring creeks, soft tackles are soft tackle. king on Metolius. <laughs> so you goop them up. And that's what John Kraft taught us. Actually, it was Karen Kraft that came up with that originally. She gooped it up and started fishing it like a dry fly. And that changed all the MO on the Metolius River. <laughs> so anyway, that's your bug. Got a little bit of stray hair there. Well, but Sherry, it looks really great. And so when when you get this thing wet, if I'll, I'll show you on, on the other uh, uh, cape that I have here, um, the other skin I have. There's one here that, especially with, with this uh, tragopan that, we're, that I'm gonna show you, it really, you could uh, not goop it up, get it wet and fish it as a nymph. <laughs> it's that good. Yeah, okay. Well, let's go on to the next one. And I'll grab the material and I'll show you that real quick. I have this lined up in rows so you can get it. This is bird number two. And I got the material here. Well, here's the next bird. The next bird is, I don't even know if I can pronounce it. Cocles pheasant hen. No, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, she gave her life so we can tie. And let me turn her around here. She'll give you an idea. The reason why I like this bird is uh, look at all the different size feathers you've got to work with. And see how the, the, all of the colors, you've got a little white color coming in here and you've got the really brownish color. Then you've got tips that are more pointed, and then some little tiny feathers right up here. So this bird right here, she, she wants to be tied. She definitely does. Hey, this is a, this is a, a color. This guy is uh, stuck to here. And see what I've done is I prepared the feather already, and I pull all this back, and I make a little tie-in point, because you're going to want to use the very 
front of that to tie in where that where the narrow part is right right here see that little tip there that's where i'm going to tie this feather in let me put another hook in the vise and so i'm a i'm an advocate if once you figure out what kind of flies you want to tie you buy that material and go ahead and get the cape or saddle or whatever from your favorite flies and the kind of flies you're going to tie and it's really important that you you go ahead and and do that so this i'm going to change threads calling for a tan thread let me get that another one i don't have i thought it was in my bucket i usually i have this set up with a bucket for every every uh every one and if I forget to put a material in the bucket, then it, I go by the wayside. Small panic, but we'll be okay. <laughs> so now we got um, the body can be gray or tan. So I'm going to use a, a gray body, and this would be for a calabatus. So if you're going to imitate a calabatus, that color, it's kind of gray. We're gonna put that gray body on there. And it goes small to big. That looks pretty good. I cut off the excess. There we go. So let me uh, grab up this wing material. This is the underwing. This is just a Zelon and it's brown. And I'm using the same method. I grab hold of the back end so I don't have to cut this short. I've already got it short. So you just take this little piece and if you're doing a production run because you've already figured out this fly works really good then uh, you're not wasting material you can cut off a, a big long piece and then keep using off of that one piece and not have to keep up by going back to the well for more material you can just keep using the same thing and then cut that off I need to get around here now I'm going to get my my little tab thing. This is one that I haven't stripped out yet. I'm going to pull it off of my sticker. And then the way to prepare this is I just hang on to it like this. And then I pull the fibers back. And then I figure out just about how many fibers I'm going to use by just putting it up against the hook and say, well, let's see, that's really close to how big I want to make it. So now you've got your tie-in point right here. And if you, you make that tie-in point, makes it easier to finish the fly. I got one more piece here. You take this feather and I put it towards the hook and I slide it right to that tie in point. I, had, I usually have to grab it and pull those feathers back. So now I've got this tie in point here that is obvious where your thread's going to go. And then you get it right close to, right on the hook, not away from the hook on the hook. So if you, I'm going to show you that, just turn this over. See how it's just sitting right there? And then when I tie down on it, you'll see I don't have to worry about fibers getting into the hook eye because it's the right length. I took me a long time to figure that out. 
<laughs> this works out pretty good. Now I need my Radio Shack. This guy is handy. This is also a way to hang on to it and do the same thing. Brush it back. Did you buy that from Radio Shack? I did. That's how long I've had it. <laughs> but you can go to any hardware store and ask for um, a set of, uh, 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 they're like uh, electronics tools where you have a positive and a negative. <sighs> electronic, electronic test clip, Sherry. That's what that's what it is. Electronic. Oh and my you, gosh, I never knew. Any that. electronic store, any electronic store has them too. And Thank you. Just, you. you I just did the last I bought them on eBay, um, and they they came from China. Was free postage. At the time I bought them, they were fifteen cents a piece. <laughs> well, uh, I buy them and I use them all over the place. Uh, this one's a medium size. I have the really small size. And um, I'll tell you what, if you could buy a lot of hackle pliers for this and not have to, you know, this is a lot less expensive. So you just cut the wire off that's between the two of them and you have red ones and black ones. So I'm just doing wraps behind, a couple in the front. And I'm going to cut this off. And it didn't unravel. That's good. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm going to. Now, this guy, between the two, you'll see is a little bit darker. Now, so depending on which feather you pick will be the color that you're going to end up with. So the body itself, this one, uh, it'll hide the hook too because I've picked the right size. The other thing that these the big skins do is you have a variety of sizes and you don't run out of that size. I was using the partridge for all my, my soft tackles and I kept get, having to get another skin because I used up all of the material down by the throat. So, it, you know, it's just little by little, you, you run out of small feathers. And I like to put it on here this way. There's other methods for tying soft tackles, but I particularly like this particular way to do it. And that's what this guy looks like. And see how buggy that looks? Pretty cool. So the next one we're going to do is a March Brown. Now the true size of this March Brown can be size 10 to 12. So uh, this, we're going to use uh, the tragopan and I'll show you what this bird looks like. And look at that guy. <laughs> it's just amazing what you can see on that bird. I'm going to put my hand over here so you can see. See the, the front of this, this guy right up here by those, those feathers are so small. You can tie your size 22s or 24s or whatever you want because they're so small. And there's this head is full. Look at how full that head is. It's, it's a hen. Yeah. Okay. And what and what I'd like to do is to show you about this hen is uh, do another um, share screen. Let me get my other glasses. And I I figured that because this is such an interesting bird, that I ought to be able to tell you a little bit more about it. So here's the tragopan. Um, This is the female. And see, she's she's hiding. So she hides and that's where she nests and has her baby. So this this bird, but look if you look at the the male. Look at how colorful the male is. This basically tells you that that this guy was it says here that this is a 
the 1829 is when they create when they found this guy and it's also called a horn pheasant and the males are have brightly colored fleshy horns on their head they can be erected during courtship <laughs> it's like that's kind of cool but anyway she's the one that has the power in my in my book <laughs> so if you look at this skin look at her colors that would blend 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 into all kinds of sagebrush where you wouldn't be able to tell her from the the uh from the area where she's got her nest but look at the different colors that are on her wing and the different sizes now look at the size of this feather for instance i pull this one off this feather look at those colors so i found what i was looking for but i've had this this skin for 10 years and i decided well i'm going to find something to use it for and i started tying these soft hackles and we will test them this summer <laughs> to see if this this uh this bird will produce like she's supposed to produce so I'm going to use a uh, brown thread. It's just a just regular brown thread. And you just put a thread base. This is basically the same. When you get into a production run on these things, it's uh, it's fairly easy to see and and get better at it. AK Best said you have to tie at least 100 flies to get started if you're really going to get a pattern going. And uh, so I've tied more than 100 soft tackle flies. So here we go. So the body uh, for this March brown, guess what? It's brown. <laughs> so, so we got brown, brown hack. We've got some brown fibers here for you. Same thing. This is that super fine. And I like super fine dubbing because I can handle it. <laughs> and so when you talk about, you know, dubbing and and how hard it is sometimes to get the right form of a body, and you go, how do I do that? Well, if you use super fine, <laughs> it's easier to get the body size that you want. And if you start tiny and then it gets big at the bottom and then take your hand, hang on to it and go around a couple of times. And you've got a nice little tight uh, thorax sitting there. And then I just pull up on it. Go down behind it. And then trim off the excess. So I always do more than I need to when it comes to putting this guy on together. So then the uh, underwing is brown. So I've got a clip with brown on it, brown Z-lon. And you notice sometimes this Z-lon is kind of like I've already stripped this out. But it gets these little knots in there, which it's made that way. So I take my bodkin to to get this uh, loosened up. I I strip out of some of this stuff like this. I strip it out. So then I know it's not jammed up where it's not going to connect the double the make the bubbles hang in there. So you just change hands. Do a pinch move. And then I've got this a little bit long, so I'm just going to move back a little bit. And it's still a little bit long, so I move it back some more. And that looks like it's about right. And I'm going to tie it down on it. Now it's going to be right in the right place for me to put that big wing on it. And we. Cut this off. 
Got my leftovers. The feather in action. So here's the feather. I've got a little bit of a piece right here that's kind of already cut off. So if I just pull like this, that means that this, I've got some broken fibers right here. So I'm particular about what I do. So I'm gonna get a different, a different feather. This has a few, but it's not as bad. So here's my feather and I'm gonna strip off all of the unneeded fluff. So that's my, that's my feather and it's buggy looking. So I'm gonna turn this around. This is now my tie-in point. See how I've got all this extra out here in the front? I'm gonna take my scissors and trim that off. Now I won't run into that hook eye. Thank goodness. So now I've got, I've on, actually I did this on purpose. I've got more wing here than I can use. So I'm going to show you how to get past that, but you go ahead and use what you can. And then when you run out of room, I'll show you how to get by that. Because this is going to be a bug that you can take it and put it on a nymph hook and get this sucker wet and it'll look just like a nymph. Just tie it on a different hook. I've got a long feather. How bushy this thing is. I'm excited about it. <laughs> Whenever I come up with something new, what I think is new, sometimes it's not, uh, I, I like to, I have uh, the best testing person on the planet whom I'm married to. He just tests the fly and he'll come back with a smile on his face or not. <laughs> I mean, this didn't work. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> We've had some failures and and then pretty soon something does work. So this is the tragopan bug. Now my make my X go right up against the feather, three wraps. And you're done. So this guy, if you wet it, I mean really wet it down, I'm gonna do that for you. I'll show you something that's really cool. And this is where it starts out looking like that. Then if you wet it, This looks like a nymph headed for the surface. That's that's a sculpin pattern right there, Jerry, a small sculpin. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I didn't I didn't really find this out, but I was gonna try to float it and I put it in some water and uh and and then it, it looked like that and I'm going, well heck why don't I just wet it some more and pretty soon then I pinch it and look at that guy and he he he's going to catch fish I just know it but you, in this case if you want to fish it as a wet fly you just you just don't get any floating on it now I have uh one more I can show you uh, which is our favorite one for the Metolius River And John ties great flies 
and they're always balanced and they're the right size you know i'm going to go over here and get my partridge over here on the so here are the precious feathers for the soft tackle and they're all right here and there's lots of uses for the other feathers but i use this up all along here because it's the right size and i don't have to fiddle around with exactly uh, all the sizes are here for the different sizes that that we fish so i just buy another skin because the skin is not very expensive and you go ahead and you for a really good one it's about 45 dollars and it'll last you a couple of years depending on how many of those flies you tie but that's the bird that's what it looks like and uh i don't know if this helps if you actually see how much see these different skins and what this bird really looks like but it was so fascinating for me to see what does it look like besides the package <laughs> and so that curiosity uh got hold of me and now someone's going to inherit a lot of material <laughs> when i croak <laughs> okay i went ahead and changed this to yellow and what works is this yellow it's kind of a really bright let me see if i can get my yellow tag here these fibers uh, for, come right off of the of a dyed dyed turkey and so i put the little strips on the sticky and i put three of them on there even though i'm going to tie one fly cuz breakage is usually here so i start out by having three of them and this is basically a biot body fly and so i just take one of the biots and i tie it in by the tip if you notice there's a long edge here and a short edge with a, a little bit of a ridge there on this feather so i cut off the tip and then i grab that that edge and i tuck it right next to the hook and tie down on it I'm going to use this and when i pull this straight up like this i turn this so the flat edge is going towards the hook eye and i grab hold of it and hold on to it from the very top then i use my trusty bodkin and i curve the i trap the feather so it goes underneath and i can get it flipped in the right direction because you want the big edge towards the front and what this creates is the coolest little ridge thing we call it a ridge thing but it's basically the bug and all his segments you don't have to put another material on here and you just wrap it you, can you see those little spines sticking up there you just take your thread yeah that's good that's hard to see sometimes and you just drop that down on the other side and then let go of your radio shack hopefully you've trapped it and if i didn't it would come unwind <laughs> it would unwind on me and any of the leftovers you can just cover it up if you want 
because you're going to put some Zelon on top of this anyway. So there's that part. <clears throat> and I've got two more left over. <laughs> That's good. So then um, uh, here's an example of something I'm going to show you that we learned in the last class. We learned that if you don't have the right color or the right material, you can make do. So this, this underwing is supposed to be olive brown. Well, I didn't have a package that said olive brown. So what I did is I took my handy dandy bodkin and I took all the kinks out of this guy and with, with two different colors, olive and brown. And that's how I made my olive brown underwing for this fly <laughs> because I ran out of the olive brown material. I'm going to go ahead and put these together and it kind of looks olive brown. I hope it works out because color, especially on the metallias, do you think that color is the last thing that matters? But if you got the wrong color on metallias, they know it and it doesn't look right. Those fish can see through that clear water. Zelon, is that a type of yarn? Yes, well, it's two different kinds. I can show you what a bag looks like. This is called Z yarn. And the other okay. kind is Z lawn. So either this Z yarn and uh, Montana fly cut, all the fly shops caught, have all kinds of different yarns. Uh, okay. Blue Ribbon Thank Flies you. in Montana has the biggest selection of all the different colors. But I ran out of the color they used to dye is the right color uh, for the brown. And so now I'm having to resort to making my own brown. And I did find that I can take a brown that's that's too dark and dunk it in some bleach and make it a better color. So that's what I'm using right now. But to emphasize what Al's class was the other night, because uh, it was, that's what we do. We, we basically take that, that uh, different things and make, make it what you can. So here's my little sticker with the feather already prepped. And the good news is it doesn't, there's no, there's no uh, residue that ends up on your feather with you use the little sticker. So that's really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my tie in point. So you see, it's gonna be right there. Hang on to it. And then I'm gonna cut this off right about there. So you're basically, I'm tying the same fly over and over again, but with different birds. Um, and this is, you saw it first. I never tried to do this before, but it, it has been such a lot of fun. So then I get my handy dandy radio ship, radio, radio shack clip. more water I'm basically brushing the hair again i pinch it and hang on to it so when you go pull down on it it slides through your fingers and that's the key to that sweeping back thing that we do and then if you can see the trap tackle tackle right there just take your your uh, bodkin and just pull those out and then sweep it again. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and tie down on that.
maybe. Three. Go back on this. Couple in the front. A three. <laughs> Cut this off. We got a bug. There you go. So again, another awesome fly, Sherry. Well, I, I, I asked uh, Jerry Chris, I said, so Jerry, what should I concentrate on at the shows? Because I'll be tying at the expo uh, for the first time because we have a, a different uh, expo chair. And he said, Sherry, tie what you like to tie and make it your own. And I just, I figured out, well, yeah, I do like to tie those. That and classic Atlantic salmon flies. but. Uh, people that watch you tie, they they don't want to sit there and watch you marry wings all day. So, so we got to get the tying thing going on. So I think uh, that's probably about what I got. That's looking good, Sherry. <laughs> so any questions? Just two comments, Sherry. First of all, the green, the green color of your blouse and the green color of the tabletop are just perfect for displaying the mm -hmm. feathers. And uh, those pelts are just gorgeous. Second comment, uh, in contrast to the many, many, many ugly male fingers that I've watched over the years, your very carefully manicured Nails were a pleasure to watch this evening. Thank you. So you like my nails. I had my nails done for you guys. I tell you, I really did. I knew it. And I thought you should be uh, complimented for it. Well, it's, I'm glad you noticed because I said, you know, I, you, you always look at your hands. And of course, as you age, you got all these wrinkles going for you. So at least you could do is have nice fingernails. And tonight... On the weekly tip, we have some gross Halloween tips with John Wright. Yeah, uh, okay, so I originally had four tips, but Al said the fourth one was way too gross for even Halloween, so here we go. I got three tips for you uh, in keeping with make do with what you got and the, the spirit of Halloween. Uh, and out here in Western Nebraska, it's, it's a really big thing. Uh, I was in a store today and the lady had the the men's in the ladies' room all decorated out in, in, in Halloween attire. So it was kind of cool. Anyway, first one, you all know about roadkill. So uh, what I do is I usually carry a, a beard trimmer, you know, one of the electric ones that I use on my beard, not the same one, uh, some Ziploc bags and a pair of uh, surgical gloves in the car. And when I come across the road, a roadkill, no matter what it is, I stop, grab my razor, and I trim that sucker for, for possible potential uses as dubbing. Uh, you got to be a little careful on the age. Some of these are pretty old. You could get into maggots and uh, all kinds of, of nasty things. So you got to be kind of careful with it. Okay, that's one gross. Two gross. You're out fly fishing and your you're, you're nice... Uh, Adams floating fly, your parachute Adams that you spent hours tying isn't floating, it's sinking. So you reach for your fly tying material, your uh, fly dryer, and it's empty. Your bottle's empty. How many, you've all had that happen. Well, there's something right in here that you can use. It's called earwax, and you can get that out, and that works really, really well as a, as a fly dryer and as a floating material. Okay, so... A lot of times we're trying to tie a fly at our bench and we just don't quite have the right color dubbing that we want. Check your belly button. You know, you may have some nice dubbing material in your belly button. And if you don't have it there, you probably got it in your dryer lint uh, catcher. So 
you can use that stuff too. And the lint, the, the dryer lint is really, really good stuff, especially for, for sinking flies. It, it sinks like a rock. So that's it, Al. There's your, your gross tips for Halloween. <laughs> hey, surely do appreciate it, uh, um, John, uh, for even being willing to take on something like this that kind of makes people hold their breath. Anyway, <laughs> great tips. Uh, after we left that fourth one out, and we'll let everybody imagine what it could be. We'll just leave it there. <laughs> anyway, right. moving to the to the next um, event. We've shared these with you in the past. They're Halloween flies from David Buckner. On the left is the witch fly. Absolutely cannot figure out how he tied this thing, but it is even got an evil look in its eyes. And the other one is the candy corn cone or the cone candy corn or something like that. Anyway, it's um, another one. Well, now the Halloween challenge has been issued. Ah, Sherry, thank you. I knew you, I knew you had that one coming. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that was, I'm trying to learn how to do a classic with a tail that's now too long. <laughs> it's an artiste uh, colors for Halloween. Love it, Sherry. Thank you for posting it for us. And uh, anyone else want to wants to get on, on the sharing? Okay, Amy Colleen, let me spotlight you. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that, do you have a name for that? It's a banshee. <laughs> when, you, when you see it from the front with the with the ears, or I assume that's the ears, it looks evil almost. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. Rabbit fur and lots of uh, marabou. Get over there. I can't get it in there. There it goes. <laughs> Great. It's Amy, fishable, thank though. you. You're welcome. Hey, Al, this is David. You know I got one. Oh, one! Oh, you got another one? Oh, awesome! I got Hold it up here, here on the spotlight. That's uh, that's my popper, but it's a two-faced popper. One side is <laughs> Dracula, oh, look at that. and the other side is Frankenstein. <laughs> oh, I love the Frankenstein <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, Jesus, David! I, when I think you can't top it, yourself, David. you do it. I don't know how he does that. <laughs> Thanks, David. And our next feature is sharing on BT's Fly Tying Friday. And as always, we'll have, we're going to spotlight Evelyn, and she's going to give us some artwork of some of the items that she saw tonight. All right, here we go. Oh, look at that. The first one. Oh, yep. my gosh. You can't the first it. one. Here is the... Uh... The next one. The second one. Love it. Like a calivatus to me. <laughs> Here is the uh, third one. <clears throat> Look at that. March Brown. And here's the last one. Oh, that'll catch a fish. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Boy, you, you really captured it. You really did. Thank yeah, you. She does, for them. She does wow. good on that. Yeah, Ferguson. Yeah. I've been noticing that you had a fly showing up in the screen from time to time. Can you share that with us? Yeah. Well, it it it's just red and black. It's actually a juicy bug. The way Audrey Joy used to tie it, although she would tie it on a double, but it's a, a split wing. And then on the very front, she would put. I don't know if you can see oh, them. Go. You can share. Just share. No. See if I can get this thing turned around. You see the jungle cock going up the wings? Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Wow. wow. She had the yeah. longest fingernails, and she would prop that jungle cock up and then wrap it around, one wrap right around the base so that uh, she, they were different than the usual. I'll do it while he's sharing. Oh, Sorry. She's the one that I kind of learned a lot of fly tying from. She used to, she took over uh, Polly's place at Myron Frank's and tied in the department store there. You were talking about the tragopan. And this is what the male bird looks like. You have a male? Wow. 
And oh these, yeah, look at that. Look at the eyes on these. Those are single eyes, but they're not enameled like on a jungle cock. But up here, you've got this beautiful orange coloration. And when you're yeah. talking about that horn, you don't see it on this one, but this one. See the. Oh, the nickname is the horn. OK, yeah. This is Ray Mel. Uh, Sherry came across a hatch of bats out here in San Diego. Oh, oh dear. check this out. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, oh that. God. That's there we go. Did. The bat fly. And so what are Excellent. the wings made out of? I'm gossamer. What would you make the wings out of? Actually, I do a lot of sewing. So I I got into my fabrics. And so I found <laughs> all <laughs> kinds of stuff. <laughs> now that that's a classic. That's I think she's going to rival you, David, down there in Mississippi. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> okay, Sherry, I thank you for the great presentation tonight. You know what that is, and it's headed oh. your way. So if you don't, <laughs> you can take the used one and pass it on to your hubby. He'd probably think it was great, and you'll have a new one. I love those things. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we, we've had a, had a lot of fun with that. So let me do the wrap, and then we can come back and chat. That's it for this week, folks. It's a wrap from BT's Fly Tying Friday. Until next Friday, take care.